The Sog Vulcan is named after a rotary cannon mounted on fighter jets that can shoot 6,020 millimeter rounds per minute. Yawn. Wig me up when General Electric invents a Gatlin gun that can shoot 6,000 knives per minute. Until a knife gun is invented, let's take a look at the Vulcan that BestLight.io sent me for review. A big beefy folder with juicy deployment is probably a sentence that makes everyone a little uncomfortable. So let's see those measurements while we're at it. Trying to stick with the theme here, the creepy one. Like the overall length, the blade length, the cutting edge, the handle size, the grip area, spine thickness, the handle thickness, and the weight. The SOG Vulcan is one of SOG's more premium knives with VG10 steel, and it's made in Japan. The VG10 blade has a lustrous satin finish. The SOG blade is described by them as a clip point, and it may very well be. It sort of looks like one, but to my eyes, it looks more like a drop point. It has a hollow grind, but they're the knife experts, and I'm just a YouTube dude. Okay, so it's thick at the spine and has a nice curved underbelly with a decent sized cutting edge. Deployment on this knife is about as smooth and easy as it can get. Now to understand that, let's look at the axis like arc lock. It operates the same basic way an axis lock does. Just pull back with two fingers to release the lock. It's nice and springy and feels solid. SOG says it can hold up to a thousand pounds of force and we're gonna try that on a cow later. So let's see the several methods for deployment. First, there's the flipper thumb stud. This is my least favorite way. I always hit my finger on the handle and you have to hit it pretty hard. So if you hold it down, gravity will do some of the work. I don't know, maybe if the flipper was a bigger stud. Next, you can always use the thumb studs up top. You don't have to hit them too hard and boom, it's consistent and very fluid. Probably one of the smoothest thumb stud deployments on any of my knives and certainly the most out of the box. It's even easier to deploy than my PM2, and that's, you know, a different method of deployment, but still, I'm just saying. Then there's the advanced deployment, where you can flick it open and lock it and disengage it with two flicks of the wrist. So for sure, it's one-handed opening and closing, easily, no pivot adjustment required, and your fingers stay out of the way when you close it. The pivot uses nylon washers on either side, but it's not creaky like it could be. You're like, deal breaker. The handle, the handle is FRN and textured. It has plenty of grip and feels slightly G10-ish in some areas, the keyword being slightly. The handle is nice and long and fits in my hand well without finger crowding. There's a little bit of harshness on the jimping on the blade spine, but I took some fine sandpaper, I think like 220 grit, knocked down some of the harsher edges on that little bit of jimping up there, and then it was fine. Anyway, you can't tell and it feels nicer on your thumb. The deep carry stainless steel pocket clip is reversible to the right or left pocket with the tip up carry. You'll need to remove a torque screw and pull the clip out to reverse it. Now it's held in by one torque screw and it is slightly wobbly, but it's not like wobbly, like nothing's gonna happen. Anyway, just thought you should know. The nested liner is a full stainless steel one, but it's not skeletonized, hence the weight. The 10 is okay and so is retention. It's possible to deploy the knife by just flicking your wrist hard and just right. But whenever you close it, the blade snaps in firmly. So this is a heavy duty knife. Let's get to the duty. So let's cut through this paper. Now it's not the sharpest I've ever had out of the box, but well, I'll show you. It skins the wood fairly easily. The edge is a fine working edge and it digs into the wood nicely. It even handles the chopping pretty well. No problems there. Now some people like lighter everyday carry knives. People who travel lighter have to wear a uniform like I do. I like something under four ounces, but there's a lot of people that don't care about that. I have heavier knives and carry heavier knives when I'm outside or doing yard work or whatever. A lot of dudes and dudettes EDC knives over four ounces like it ain't no thing. The deployment on this knife is phenomenal. I don't like the flipper action, but all the other deployments are spot on. In fact, I don't even know why it has the flipper. And looking around the web, most people seem pretty positive about this knife. Check out some other reviews. It has that Nice big handle and that big blade. The handle could be a tad more comfortable, but it's still just fine. Maybe a little less busyness to it, like the, the metal on the back. Okay, let's move on to the harder stuff. Um, you're like, oh, cool man, time to bring it out. Let's chop some batonable size pieces first. 
I'll let the chopping be the music and shut up for a bit. Okay, no I won't. I'll cut two pieces, then baton them up several times. I won't edit this, but you'll see at no time does the lock fold. I feel a lot more confident in this than the cheap Gonzo Axis locks or the one on my Griptilian. And you're like, sacrilege. Remember that video I did? I have a Crooked River I'm going to review soon, so maybe we'll see if that one's any better than the one on the Griptilian. Anyway, so just a little bit more of this, and then we'll move on. Okay, now to the batoning part. We're gonna see if we can get it to eventually fold, um, but it makes short work of this wood. I'm going through it pretty quick. Now I'm gonna say it's pretty dry pine. It's not rotten, but it's well seasoned. Um, now remember, you shouldn't baton with a folder, standard disclaimer, but this test will simulate unscientifically a hard hit on the knife blade from the top. Just a few more pieces, all right. Break it down a little bit more. Nice, it holds up pretty well. The edge retention is actually pretty good. I clean the blade up under some water, get some, got some of the sap off, and it's pretty much about like it was before I started beating on it. I'm still impressed with edge retention on this VG-10. It's a stout blade and it holds up nicely to stuff you really don't need to do with a stout knife. If you like this review, subscribe to my channel, like the video, follow me on the Instagrams, and leave a comment. This knife was provided by bestlight.io for review. Now while they currently only carry lights, they will soon start selling knives like this. Check out my Ace Beam reviews I did for them a few months ago. And browse all the major brands of lights they carry. The link is in the description along with the coupon code. A code which could expire in the future, so don't be mad if it does. But if you'd like to stay mad, hey man, it's your blood pressure. Thanks for watching.